when we were recording it. I was gone. I went to the event on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday night up in Portland. Well, thank you. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks for coming. For those of you that don't know me and I don't know you, my name's Colin Stapp. I am one of the faculty members in the Tech Hub and participated in the uh, COM 120 class again this year. This is the second year that I was able to participate. And it's a class about international development during winter term. And the capstone of the class is a trip to I uh, almost said to Oaxaca. <laughs> that's, that's the class this summer. To uh, La Pimienta, uh, Nicaragua. And we worked with a group down there called Amos Health and Hope. And La Pimienta is about six hours drive from Managua. And um, you can see that there's all different types of transportation that we passed along the way. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our trip, show you some photos, but feel free to ask questions and, and uh, all that. La Pimienta is pretty remote, as you can see. Um, we're headed down to cross a river. And in fact, one of the little mini buses that we took, we had to leave on the side of the road. They had to unload everyone, bring that ambulance back, load us back up, because the, the mini bus couldn't cross the river. But you can kind of, I mean, you can see that it's, it's very pretty. It's kind of arid where we were, it's up in the mountains. Um, but it's really dry this time of year. They have a, a wet season and a dry season, and we were there in the dry season. This is downtown La Pimienta. Not much. It's very remote. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen is the evangelical church. On the right side is the minister's home. Um, and then that's kind of where a lot of things happen around the church activity and then in the schoolyard, which I'll show you as well. can kind of get a sense of what some of the homes are like and uh, I'll show you there'll be a lot of pictures of the kids and the people as well it's pretty it's also hot I um, it's pretty hot <laughs> I wrote down five words that I thought would describe um, the trip one of them was hot uh, uncomfortable Tiring, rewarding, the last one is actually two words, it's life-changing. Um, probably one of the greatest aspects of this trip is that it is associated with class. And we had um, several nursing students from the nursing program that went, several pre-nursing <coughs> students that are CNAs right now and want to get into nursing. And so that experiential piece of them getting to use their skills, learn new things, um, and watching everyone try things that they'd never done before um, is pretty amazing and I think is one of the benefits of, of the college offering this trip. This is the playground. It uh, never ceases to amaze me that there are, I think there were four different sets of swing sets with no swing. The government had come in many years ago and built the school, it's just a, a stone structure four different, I think four different classrooms and then a playground area. Um, and then this is right outside the school. This is one of the newer wells. And one of the, the key things about what we learned in the class for international development um, is all about water and sanitation, um, health, education. Um, this is one of the good outhouses. There were not good ones. Um, a lot of cockroaches as well. Um, but housing, human rights, gender equity, um, and economics are just some of the major themes that we talked about in the class and that the students actually got to see play out um, while we were there. And I would be remiss, since Cecilia Monto, the, one of the instructors, isn't here, to not say that um, one of the, the goals of international development is capacity building. That's her big term that she likes to use. And so what we did uh, on this trip and what we did last year as well was working with the community. So not just going in and doing something for them, but working alongside them and providing some education. 
Um, so some of the kids' activities were actually educational activities to help them learn about proper sanitation, washing their hands, you know, and still making it fun and things like that. <coughs> So this photo, I just posted this on my blog not too long ago because it, uh, I think, equates to so much more than just a woman carrying a bucket of water, which she is. But it kind of gets at the, uh, the gender equity that the role of women in these developing countries is doing just that. They carry water all day long, multiple times a day. Um, and water is something that we, I know I take for granted sometimes, and it's one of those precious commodities there. Um, and you'll see it as we go along, one of our activities, we, we had several different activities and projects. One was working with at the health clinic and it was replacing a roof um, and doing some plastering and things like that on the interior walls. And then working with water filters and building um, recipient buckets. And the recipient buckets were literally five gallon buckets. We had hundreds of them and we constructed uh, a means for the people that when they have the, the filters in their homes, they're often, they're filtering the water through a, like a charcoal and sand filter. Um, but oftentimes they'll put their water in something that's contaminated. So they have filtered water, they recontaminate it. So the idea with these recipient buckets was to provide them with something that once they pull the water out of the, the filtered water out, they had something that was covered that they could um, provide water for their families. So one of the very first things that we did, uh, first day that we were there was we cut a lot of PVC pipe, drilled holes in buckets, and put these things together. So it was a chance for our students to, to try new things that they'd probably never done before in assembling probably, David, what, was it about 100 buckets or something like that? About 120. 120. So some of our other instructors and faculty and, and staff that went on the trip got to work alongside the students. And I, so I think that's one of the other great things is that just the, the group dynamics and the bonding that actually happened uh, on these trips and not just with the community members, but our group as well. Uh, we're together 24 seven for about nine days. So this is some of the buckets that are already constructed and then they all had lids on them as well. And they were passed out at a um, community celebration. But you can see here, th uh, this is a, a nurse from the community. She works up at uh, Steiner's Hospital, Aaron. She participated in the course last year and, and this year as well. We had several community members. So we had several high school students. Um, Aaron, the nurse from Steiner's, uh, Salem Kaiser teacher. Um, plus our own students. We had 21 all together. And the group from Chemeketa included student staff and um, faculty. But you can see it was really a community project. Um, so we didn't just go in and do it for them. They helped us. The kids really got into it. And then they were given out uh, on the last day. So people would come from a long ways away. This little old man was, he was old. I have no idea how old he is. Uh, we're pretty sure that he was deaf, but and he walked a long way to get there, but he came and got his bucket and was, you know, very appreciative to have it. So moving on to our next project was working over at the clinic. So Amos um, has a whole support network of people that, that went with us. So they had drivers who also helped with a lot of the logistics and things like that. They had two kind of general laborers that did all the um, roofing work, they were putting sheet metal roof on the clinic. And so we were painting the girders and things like that that then they were going to uh, weld and put into place. So we spent better part of a couple days uh, painting girders and things like that, all the framework that was out there. And this day uh, does, you can't tell um, from it, but it was about 100 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> so this is what the health clinic looks like, sand roof. 
We got it all. They got it all done by the time we left. They were putting the sheet metal on the last couple days that we were there. And this is one of the Amos guys welding the pieces into place. And that's Lee Johnson from my department. He's one of our tech support people. And then Jim Eastman in the back. And again, just working alongside some of the Amos folks and the community folks that would come up each day and help out. We did a lot of walking while we were in La Pimienta. We walked pretty much everywhere we went. Um, and we went out of town several days to do what they call filter supervision. So we'd go to, we'd go to the homes where some of these filters had been installed. And um, the church that David goes to in McMinnville, First Baptist Church, is sponsoring La Pimienta. And so several years ago, they helped fund getting the filters put in. Do you know how many homes, David? That's what I thought was like 150. So part of that um, capacity building is not just putting something in and then leaving it, but actually going back. So Amos will go regularly and provide education on the use of them, the proper use of water filters, um, check and make sure they're still working. If they're not working or they're broken, find out what happened, help them put, get them put back together and things like that. So this day there was a group of us that we'd gone out and um, well, we'd probably gone, well, it was a good 30 to probably 45-minute drive by ambulance. They took us out, crossed the river. We did all the supervision and then walked back that later that morning. And we hit, pro there was enough of us that we split up into groups and we went to about probably 10 or 15 homes. Um, part of the other home visit is uh, going and doing some health-related. So this year we didn't do as much health-related activities as we did last year with Amos is primarily a health agency. And so um, we did get out. Actually, let me go back to the one. Um, we did get out and do a little bit of home visits. Um, and Sylvina is the woman on... Uh, the right, far right, who lives in the community, and she's what uh, Amos has um, termed a health promoter. So they've given her some basic instruction and things like that, and she'll go visit people, um, do blood pressure checks, things like that. And um, three of our pre-nursing students got a chance to go along with her. And then Eliza is a high school student who was the translator, had four years of high school Spanish and learned a lot more that day because she hadn't had all the uh, medical terminology. Um, Eliza is David's daughter, and this is the second year that she's gone on this trip. This is what the filters look like. So um, what we would do when we'd go check out the filters is they'd actually run a test to see how fast they were flowing, make sure that, like, in about 10 minutes that they were enough water was coming out. Because that's one of the things that if, if they get clogged or they – aren't working properly, the people just stopped using them. So they wanted to make sure that enough water was coming out that would, that would satisfy a family's, you know, daily needs and things like that. But you can see that, you know, we could cross anything uh, as we're out walking. So just cattle loose out in the middle of the road. This is what one of the kitchens looked like. Um, but it, this is probably a pretty good representation of what we saw um, out in the community. <coughs> and then what our walk was like coming back. Um, this is some of the activities that we did with the kids. So this was like a coloring exercise, but it, it's all in Spanish and it's all about uh, proper hand washing and sanitation and things like that. We also did a hand washing exercise with them and uh, did some games as well so that they could 
uh, learn the benefits. So they'd wash their hands and they literally shine. It's al almost like CSI, shine the blue light on there to still see how many germs are on the kids' hands and things like that. So the other piece of the whole trip was um, just the bonding with the community. And uh, the student in the middle is uh, Nicole. She's a second year nursing student. And uh, it was amazing to watch how the kids took to everyone in our group. Uh, we took some baseball bats and soccer balls and wiffle balls and things like that. Um, baseball is a national sport there, so they pretty much knew what to do when they got all the supplies. Um, but we had a lot of uh, different activities uh, with the kids. And the other thing that you'll start to notice in some of these pictures is, is a lot of the same kids and people. The kids never got tired of having their pictures taken. Um, David and I both did most of the photography and video along the trip. And I know I shot probably over 2,500 photos. So I hope you guys are OK being here for a while, because there's a lot to go, <laughs> lot to go through. This is Aaron, the, sci the nurse from Shiners. And so we were, they were just, a lot of times, we'd just be sitting out in the playground and the kids would come by and you know we'd start playing with them and talking to them. And they just hung around all the time. It was kind of fun. And we walked some more. We walked pretty much all the time. We walked to dinner. Um, our, where we had our meals. Amos um, sent two cooks as well, so they cooked all our meals. Um, we carried in, I don't know how many five-gallon containers of fresh water, and then they would, it was so hot that they were going back into town to get more water um, while we were there as well. Great th the other great thing about this trip is that we all had uh, a common goal and our work was all the same, but everyone had their own takeaway of how, what it meant to them, how they participated, what they got out of it. Um, and on our way back, we had a layover in um, Houston. And part of the class also included that students all had to keep a journal. And then they used their journal um, while we were in the airport to actually give presentations. And it was pretty amazing to hear the students talk about what nine days had meant to them. And it really is life-changing for a lot of them, especially for the nursing students, because they really realize the power of public health and what the difference that they can make, um, whether they're traveling doing this or if they want to work abroad you know, permanently and full time. And especially for the three students, so this is um, Amanda, um, Oh my gosh, I forgot her name. The middle one, David. Lena. Lena and Hope. Amanda had never ever not only been out of the country, she'd never flown on an airplane before. <laughs> so when we left Portland, she had the, uh, the death grip, as I called it, on the, <laughs> on the seat. I was sitting across from her. And um, she was excited, but you could tell, really nervous. Um, but she totally came out of her shell on this trip and wrote a really great poem about her experience and is excited, wants to do more of this. This is the community celebration. So one of the, the last day that we were in the village, um, we had a big um, gathering of most all the community members. And this is where we passed out all the recipient buckets and um, had a lot of different presentations and things like that. Um, we also had the opportunity, we were there right before Easter, so Holy Week is really big uh, in Latin American countries. And so we were actually, this was outside the Catholic Church, we had the opportunity to either go to the Evangelical Church or the Catholic Church. Being a good s preacher's kid, my dad was a minister, I wasn't paying attention to the service at all, I was outside shooting photos. <laughs> um, but even their church services were kind of chaotic. People were running in and out. Animals were running in and out, um, but it was pretty amazing. Hi, Glenellen. 
but it was a fun experience um, for sure. Kids were always wanting to see what we were doing. So they're, they were always around. And One of the other activities that we were able to do is um, let actually the community members um, take pictures of their community and things that they wanted to make changes to. So we, a um, couple of people in our group had shown this girl how to use a little digital camera and then sent her out taking photos. Um, this is Kathy Euston, Jim's wife. She celebrated her birthday while we were there. And I think that's the other thing that um, we all noticed on this trip is how the compassion of the people in the, in the community, how open and welcome they, welcoming they were to us. And, and more than one person noted that when we were going on these uh, filter supervisions or um, the health visits to people's homes, how welcoming they were to have a group of people that they don't even know come into their house. And that probably wouldn't happen here in the United States. Uh, people would be very reluctant. Uh, there were times we just went by a person's house and asked them if we could use the outhouse. I mean, and that's how, you know, compassionate they were. This is the minister and his wife, and it was Kathy's birthday, so we were all down uh, eating breakfast one morning, and they came down and sang happy birthday to us. And David's excited because he's a Yankees fan and, <laughs> of course, had the Yankees hat on. I don't know. I wonder. I'm going to have to take a box of Mariners hats next year. <laughs> the people don't have a lot in this town, um, but they are definitely a community. They, they all work together. Um, and they're, they're very happy, um, and they're very appreciative that Amos isn't there and that um, this is the second year that we've gone back to this same town, and a lot of the people remembered who we were, and uh, we re obviously remembered who they were. So there's definitely some connections being made by, by going back uh, year after year. So this is Lena. We were actually on our way um, to do some sightseeing, but she was writing in her journal. I mean, that's, I think, another great aspect of this trip is that um, they, the students really got into this experience and wanted to, to write things down so they wouldn't forget any of it. And we walked some more. So this was our part of our convoy. We also they also had a big um, truck that carried in all the other building supplies and things like that. So our last day, we did get to do some sightseeing. So we went to a little um, very historic old town called Lyon, and this is one of the cathedrals that's in the town. And again, because it was Holy Week, there was a lot going on so we actually got to um, go through this this is inside that cathedral and this is another one in kind of the main square but we got to see some of the parade for Holy Week um, and the, the you can tell the streets are just packed um, and then we got to see some um, artwork being done in the streets, and it kind of puts our chalk art to shame. This is all uh, sawdust, and it's all painted different colors. And then they start placing it out, and there were up and down, this whole street was closed, and up and down the street they were doing all this artwork um, for Holy Week and for Easter. And this is our group with the Amos folks. There's 21 of us and probably about 12 um, 
Amo staff as well. So we had a big group um, going to watch the meeting. And finally, the other great aspect of this trip was just with all the staff from Chemeketa, it was great to get to, um, you know, I'd gone on this trip last year with David and Cecilia, but it was great to have Jim and Jim Ellen and Lee also go. Um, and just the connection that we all made together uh, and with the students. And we got a little R&R &R in the hammock back at <coughs> the Amos headquarters. Oops. Um, I wrote down some numbers, too, and I forgot to mention this when we were talking about uh, the water and things like that. Um, and some of these we got from uh, our class as well, that 54% of the world's population live, le live on less than $2 a day. 40% um, of the world's population lack proper medical care. Um, and this figure I got from a website called water.org. Um, over 70 million people across the globe lack access to clean um, water. So that's the other thing that made me think about our water usage. Um, that's, those are big numbers and why the work that we were doing uh, with Amos and what Amos does on a regular basis um, throughout the country, they don't only work in La Pimienta. Um, they work around in many different areas uh, within Nicaragua. Um, but how it all plays together, the health and water and sanitation and just by providing those, the, the filters, the water filters, they've been able to see, you know, disease and things go down, malnutrition in the kids go down, um, just from simple, you know, what to us seems very simple. Any questions or comments or everyone's ready to go on this trip, I know. I know, Art, you mentioned you're interested in it. <laughs> in poquito. <laughs> and I love that you're calling it Nico Amos because it's so much better than no, you don't. part of it. Because what it means is that he belongs to the team, and they were the ones who would do anything to stay. Mm -hmm. It is helpful, but y yeah, you don't have to, to know it. Yeah, Mark. I'm just curious about um, uh, the folks that live in La Pimienta. Uh, what happens when you have a medical need that goes beyond, you know, like you couldn't care for your own child? And, you know, how does that really sort of leave them in that situation? That's a good question because uh, one of the AMO staff was telling us a story about in a different area how uh, a woman had been injured cut herself with a machete or something like that, which means bleeding profusely. Had to walk a couple hours to even get to the village to the health promoter who had nothing. It was after hours. He had no lights or anything like that. He was pretty sure that she was not going to make it. She did. Um, and they were able to save her. And I think, was it her leg, David? Yeah. 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 And they were able to save the leg. But, I mean, you know, it's Sylvina is the only one in La Pimienta that really has any kind of training. Um, so it, that's a good question, actually. I mean, the Amos goes there regularly, but they're not there all the time, and there's not necessarily a doctor you know, close by. The closest town is a good hour away by you know, rough road, and that's in the dry season because that river that I showed the picture of um, during the wet season makes it completely impassable. So these people are cut off during the rainy season for periods of time. I remember when we took you the year before or when I went on this trip, we stopped by that clinic. Were you with us? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, like some of the ladies that are pregnant, they come into the town before their delivery day so that they're closer to the clinic when they are going to deliver. Mm -hmm. Because they actually
It was a panel in Ian Davidson. And there was a woman in the lobster in the inside that I think rides, is it rides by horseback six hours one way to go and get her insulin mm-hmm. oh, right. oh, yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. So right. every, every three or four days. Yeah, she's that's doing right. this multiple oh. times a week. Well, it was like a small refrigerator. Like have something solar powered at the clinic, some solar panels that they could at least run like a little refrigerator like for a brand name or something and keep some, you know, keep insulation and things there so that she wouldn't have to be going six hours by horseback three, four times a week. It was at least three times a week that she was doing this. Well, thank you all for... And I'll, um, these are all, I've actually posted all these photos on my website, so um, I can send you any of you the link so that you can see them again, and I'll be posting more. Um, and David and I shot a bunch of video, and I, we did some interviews with some of the students, so we'll be putting something together that'll probably go up on the International Programs website. Till next weekend.